Western Foreman. Hey, there's Daryl Strawberry thinking he's at Cameron Indoor. It was easy pickings for the Lakers early. Eldon Campbell hitting from the baseline. Then uh, he takes it to the basket. Nice move here. Campbell with 12 and a half. Lakers uh, out running as well. Perkins, the long pass to Worthy, and the showtime pass to A.C. Green. Lakers up by 17 at the break. Drexler trying to lead his team back in the fourth. Mario Ellie finding Clyde. Clyde with the layup and the foul. He had 30. Portland within eight. But Sedale three took control. The pull-up J. Then a very confident Sedale here. The head fake and the jumper is good. And then again, off the dribble. He hits three with 12 of his 26 in the fourth quarter. The Lakers cruise. The Lakers shot 64 players could be found. Charles Barkley and Larry Johnson. Here's an example of some of that excitement. LJ finishing off the alley-oop. Then it's a Charles Barkley matching the jam. Check out the breakaway slam. Suns down by three at the half. Scoring outside, no problem uh, for Johnson in Barkley's face and over him for two. Johnson led Charlotte with 29. Barkley says, hey, I can hit from downtown, no problem. Three of his 23. Suns up by three after three. How about assists? Okay, here's one. Johnson on the break to Kendall Gill for the layup. Hornets stay close late. But Barkley says, I can dish off two. This one to Dan Marley. Marley had 21 points. Barkley had 10 assists, and Paul Westfall's sons have won their fifth straight. Barkley also had 12 rebounds in this. Camp was going to get them one. Camp down low gets rejected by Shackelford, but Camp keeps at it and gets the rebound. Camp with 19 in the first. Doug Moe using his, a three-guard lineup. First, it was Dawkins bearing the jumper. Hersey Hawkins with 25 points, and then Hornacek nailing the J. Hornacek had 20 points. 76 was led by 28 in the fourth. The minute bowl was not a factor. The game was already decided for George Carl and his Sonics, and the Sixers win it easily. Carl said it seemed the Sixers were knocking down Jays all night long. It didn't matter to Michael who was there. Jordan with a fake in the J, 17-6 Bulls. Jordan with a steal behind the back to B.J. Armstrong, who starts the break, finds Scotty Pippen for the lay-in. Bulls by 13. Jordan, though, doing it all from half court. The alley-oop to Pippen. Bulls lead by 11 at the half. Michael smiling because he was working on a triple-double. Second half, Michael down the lane, switches to the left hand, 60-44 Bulls. And Pippen with a simple alley-oop to Jordan. Isn't this getting boring? Jordan with 28 points. They go on to a 108-91 victory. Jordan. The Pistons focusing on Shaquille O'Neal inside, double and triple teaming him at times. Shaq still going to the hole with authority. Green leaves it out for him, and he slams it through. O'Neal only had 17 points in this game. Rodman tough on the boards, and he also threw up a three. Shaq and Rodman hustling, hitting the boards and each other hard all night. But Dennis Scott with the double teaming on Shaq, he was getting open and hitting some three-pointers. The Magic have the lead. Detroit in the second half with Woolridge leading the rally behind his back. A little showtime for the Pistons. They were up 10 until Dennis Scott hit another three. To cut it down, it was a one-point game. Then Dumars takes over the next six points. In fact, Joe Dumars had a season-high 39 as the Pistons went on to win at 13 of his points, came in the final three and a half minutes. Rodman, 22 rebounds. Orlando, 14 three-pointers. That's a team record too shy of the NBA record. The Nuggets and the Celtics playing in Boston. Talk about a hot shooting half. Kevin McHale got it going baseline, then the X-Man from the wing. D. Brown fires one up. Boston shot 73% in the first half. Here's McHale from the right side. Kevin Gamble, three ball, side pocket. And Dan Issel to head down because his team was down. 73-49 at halftime. But Chris Jackson hit the tough runner and then a three. He had 26. Denver made 16 of 22 shots in the third quarter. And that was reason to smile because the Nuggets got close, but then Reggie Lewis put away Denver as they continue to struggle on the road. Xavier McDaniel with 24. Lewis had a uh, season-high 36. Jumbo with a 10-3 and three start. Milwaukee's lost four in a row. They continue a tough five-game trip at Golden State on Thursday night. Two struggling teams. Don Nelson put a tie back on. Would he get a win out of it? Oh, he had to be pleased with this combination. Mullins to Hardaway. They go coast to coast, and Tim takes it past everyone and takes it to the hole for two. What about the lookie, rookie, Latrell Sprewell? Went to Alabama. He played for the Crimson Tide. The easy dunk for Sprewell. Back come the Bucks. Mayberry to Blue Edwards for the scoop. Milwaukee led by seven and a half. In the second half, day to Blue Edwards. And would the Warriors lose again? Well, no, they would come back with a huge end of the game. Hardaway for three. He had 14 of his 31 in the final period, of his 29 in the final period. Golden State winning 114-102.
scoring 15 of the last eight out for the Jazz with a bad back first half. Here's an offensive weapon that the Jazz have not used much of, the three-pointer. John Stockton hit it. Frank Layden not enthused, but up 10 his team was. Rex Chapman, huge game coming off the bench using the window. He had 32, but the mailman was too much. Watch the thunderous right-hand dunk. Cheer up, Frank. You're winning this game. Then David Benoit with 18. Nice move around Purvis Ellison for the dunk. Frank, I guess you start to look like your wife when you're married to her that long, huh? Utah wins 112-96. Carl at 30. Admiral David Robinson going to work on Ronnie Cycli. Spurs led by three at the half, five at this point in the third. Remember 86, Navy played Syracuse in the tournament. Robinson got the best of Cycli. Ronnie gets one back there. J.R. Reed in a Spurs uniform. Could have a great game, limited just four points. And the struggle. Look at Tark. What's going on? Where's the Admiral taking the outside for a jumper? Then on the inside, a turnaround. He also had seven assists. 15 3 Spurs run in the fourth, closes it out. Lloyd Daniels, alley oop. Sean Elliott, two of his 13. Spurs win by 10. Daniels had 17 in this game. That's five straight at home for the Spurs. Against the third best scoring team in the league, the Hornets facing the league's lowest yielding defense in a game that featured the first pro meeting of former Georgetown centers Alonzo Mourning and Pat Ewing. The Knicks and the Hornets going at it. These two never faced each other except in practice when they were with the Hoyas. First half, Patrick gets the jumper, hit 13 of 26 from the floor. Alonzo has trouble on the other end and is stripped by Doc Rivers. So Ewing hits the jump hook. The Knicks lead by seven at halftime. Ewing getting the best of it early. Second half, Alan Bristow telling Alonzo, don't be intimidated by this guy. Muggsy Bogues drives and feeds, and Morning lays it in over Ewing, and then Bogues, this is a real sharp pass. No size differential with that delivery. Morning for the slam dunk. Then Patrick in the third quarter, draining the jumper as time runs out in the third. Look at Alonzo taking a kick at Ewing, and he misses. Hornets still leading by three. Late fourth quarter, tied at 94. Starks, that's a poor shot in that situation, so we go to overtime, and maybe Patrick Ewing should have been the one taking the shot. In the OT, that's Del Curry shoving away Starks, and then hit the three-pointer. Starks never got a call and can't believe it. The Hornets in overtime, 110-103. Larry Johnson stole the show with 28 points. 22 came in the second half. Morning with 20. A couple of New York natives, Kenny Anderson and Mark Jackson, saying hello. First quarter, Jackson feeds Kenny Norman for the one-handed stick. And then Anderson passing it for Chris Morris who was in double figures. Jackson this time doing it himself, slicing to the hoop, part of a 8 nothing clipper run, then draws in Petrovic to Anderson for the nice move, and the Nets leading at the break. Derek Coleman still sitting it out. Third quarter, Danny Manning with a slam dunk. L.A. within four. Fourth quarter, Jackson the swipe. Anderson's pass takes it coast to coast over Petro, and L.A. ties it at 105, under 30 to play. Anderson to Chucky Brown, baseline, he had 18. And Anderson said, hey, let's go to the Stanley Russian Roberts tea room and celebrate as he has his first triple-double. And the Nets win it over the clips of the four games. McCann working on the low post. Nice pass here to Michael Williams, who gets the easy layup, and the T-Wolves are up 12. Derek Harper, the veteran, misses the open layup. And then Terry Davis, and this, uh, that's not good. Richie Adubato, his team missed 12 straight shots. They only shot 30% of the first half. Chuck Person lit it up from three-point range. He scores 26 in the T-Wolves over the struggling Mavs. 111-88. Terry Davis, Diggly Dallas with 21 points to win their fourth straight. Detlef Schrempf scoring 26. Tisdale had gone from fantasy land to Space Mountain. It's been a rough ride for the Magic, especially in the month of December where they have gone 0 for 5. Everywhere they looked on the calendar, losses. But they looked at the big guy, Shaq, to turn it around. He had trouble against the Suns' defense, missing the dunk. And Phoenix goes the other way. Barkley bringing it up, the outlet to Cedric Ceballos for the reverse jam of the Suns, led by four. Second half, Barkley, great feed to Tom Chambers, who had a big night off the bench. Shaq and company battling back in the fourth quarter. Nice move on Oliver Miller, the one-handed stick. The Magic go up by three. Then in the fourth quarter, Suns down one. Off balance, Dan Marley gives the Suns a one-point lead. Magic battling back. Dennis got the three-pointer. They're down only two. Paul Westfall watching it close. They foul Shaquille O'Neal. This gets the Magic to within one. Matt Gukas watching as he could have tied it. A 53% foul shooter does not get it done. And Barkley and Miller, there's some beef going together there. They hang on as the Suns win at 108-107. Six Rip City, also the name of the official magazine of the Blazers. And on the run, Tracy Murray. 
Started because Jerome Kersey is out, gives the Blazers a 14-point lead. But this trio, Shrimp, Fleming, and Miller, led a furious Pacer comeback. Fourth quarter. Fleming lays it in, then Miller again to Fleming. Tied it at 112, and what a night for Vern. He had 28. Closing seconds of regulation. Porter for the win, and it does not go. So tied at 112 into overtime. Fleming's turn to dish to Detlef Shrimp, who hits from the corner. He had 32. The Blazers staying in it with Terry Porter. A three ball, side pocket. Tied at 114. Blazers with a chance to win in overtime, but Clyde Drexler called for the charge, and that call was not good. So a second overtime. The Pacers take advantage. Reggie Miller from way out. It's a 38-footer. He had 21 and worth celebrating as the Indiana Pacers win in double OT by 10. Shrimp did foul out in that second overtime, but had the big 32. Cliff Robinson twitters going at it. First half, Sam Perkins lighting it up for Los Angeles. Gets that to roll. Had 16 points in the first two quarters. Helped the Lakers out to the lead. Mike Dunleavy, the ex-Laker coach in town, scouting, was not in the right seat. Lakers with a big lead, and Vlade Divac in the second half. The spin move puts his team up by 13. Then Anthony Peeler with a little showtime. Actually, a better percentage of shooting from three-point range than two. And Vlade Divac on the alley-oop, scoring in double figures. What a country, as he leads the Lakers to a 118-93 win. He had 12 rebounds and seven blocked shots. Has won just once in the last 15 games here. But Sean Kemp and Gary Payton hook up. Payton scoring 23 in the game. Derek McKee goes over McHale to give Seattle an eight-point lead on the Celtics. They led by 17, but then Robert Parrish with the foul cuts the lead down to three. And a 17-point lead. Well, George Cross, I hate when that happens, but the Sonics pull away. Payton to a streaking Sean Kemp. He had 18, and between Payton and Kemp, Seattle wins it 100 to 90. And Peyton, since uh, taking 400 shots, says he'll never play for the Mavericks and plans to return to Ohio State and make himself available for the 1993 NBA draft. Dallas's top pick was insulted by a four year contract offer made by team owner Donald Carter. Mavs GM Norm Sanju told ESPN Friday night he understands the frustration of Jackson and hopes after conferring with Carter that Jackson will accept a six-year deal worth $19 million with $2.6 million paid in full at the signing. The Los Angeles Clippers came into Friday's game against squaring off. They were former mates on the 68 ABA New Orleans Buccaneers. That's Larry Brown shooting the three that way. Here's how they do it in the 90s. Jeff Hornacek with the exhibition. Then uh, Hornacek continued to show how it's done. Hornacek with 21 points in the first half. Clippers Danny Manning behind the back here. Nice play to Philly native Randy Woods who finds Harper for the lay-in. More Clippers, though, in the third. Mark, Mark Jackson, Jackson, the spin and the dish to Manning for the J. Jackson with 10 assists, only one turnover. Hornacek pulls the Sixers back. The tough fall away goes Sixers within seven. But Gary Grant comes up with the long pass to Harper for the easy two. The look of disgust by Doug Moe as the Sixers sink again. Moe calling his team's performance on defense one of the all-time worst. Hornacek and Jackson didn't have any complaints, though. They come to one, made his presence felt. He does that a lot. The block on Pippen. Five blocks in the game for Akeem. Then in the second, up, Pippen makes the bullet pass to Grant, who dunks it. Rockets, though, led by two at the half. Second half, Akeem unstoppable. The fading J on the baseline over Mr. Bill. Akeem likes that spot so much, he did it again over Horace Grant and Scotty Williams this time. And yes, the same spot, this time over Stacey King. Akeem with 28 points, Rockets led by 15. The Bulls come back, though. Who else leads a comeback? This guy, Michael. Bulls cut the lead to five, but the Rockets were just too much. The ball will end up in Robert Ory's hands. The huge jam over Stacey King. The Rockets run away. Chicago had 18 turnovers in this game. It led to 23 Houston points. It was the Bulls' sixth loss at home. Last year, that didn't happen until January 28th. The Cavs, they had Mark Price back in their game in Auburn Hills. And Price looked good early. Looked like his hip pointer had healed. He drains the three. He had 12 points. But Price would miss the fourth because he re-aggravated the injury. Joe Dumars leading the Pistons off the dribble and then the three. Dumars had 28. Then it was uh, Joe doing his stuff on defense, the steal off the Price, and then the outlet to Isaiah, who passes to the big O for the big jam. Then with time running down in the third period, check out Danny Young, the half-court shot at the buzzer goes. Pistons go on to win this one, 107-103. Rebound man, Dennis Rodman, 21 boards, the seventh. Chris Jackson finds Reggie Williams 
Hoka pulls up and hits the J. Williams led Denver with 27. For the Hawks, Travis Mays was the man from outside. He had 19. He was 7 for 9 from the field. More Denver. It looked like the game was theirs uh, in regulation. Williams finds Matumbo, who puts the nice moves on Rasmussen, and scores. Matumbo had 12 points. But the game moved to OT, where the Hawks passing took over Willis to Dominique for the dunk. Wilkins had 20, 33. Hawkins win this one in OT. It's the 11th time this 